Well, good evening, good people. Mark Holmes here. As always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope everybody's having a great Taco Tuesday. I hope your taco dreams are coming true. You know, I'm amazed about something here. Um, 49er fans... I am hearing from more 49er fans that are trying to rub it in my face that they are in the Super Bowl. Not just here on the channel. They're literally sending me emails with pictures of Brock Purdy. You know, I have to say it's kind of funny to me because I have to think uh, it's been a long time since my Cowboys have been the Super Bowl. It just has. And, you know, if Kansas City wins, it's getting, you know, they're getting close to how many the Cowboys have. And I will be rooting for the Kansas City Chiefs uh, for no other reason than to shut up 49er fans because you guys, man, you guys are some kind of special. But if my Cowboys were in the Super Bowl, and I know this is just a hypothetical because, of course, it doesn't look like it's going to happen anytime soon uh, with everything that's going on with the Cowboys and stuff. I'm still waiting to hear if we hear anything from the Cowboys about Mike Zimmer's interview and things for the day. But I have to say, if my team were at the Super Bowl right now, and here it is, this is Super Bowl week. I wouldn't be worried about Eagle fans. I wouldn't be worried about 49er fans or Giant fans or Washington fans. I would be basking in the glow of my team having a chance for football immortality. I wouldn't be dealing with the little peons out here that didn't make it. I wouldn't waste my time worrying about, you know, those other guys. I'm on top. I don't understand why we are in... 49ers heads. I, I just I just don't understand it. I would be enjoying it. But hey, it's okay. I'm happy to steal some of the thunder from you that you've got to spend so much time thinking about us. In the meantime, I am hoping that for once that I can actually believe what Jerry Jones is saying, that they're going to make a big splash when it comes to hiring a new defensive coordinator, that they're going to go all in and actually do some things. And I'm, I'm, I'm beginning the process of trying to put together what the Cowboys need to do. Because one of the things I've touched on a little bit that bothers me about the Cowboys and where we are as a franchise is when things are going right, oh my goodness, we are incredible. But when things are going wrong, it just snowballs and goes downhill, and we literally just kind of like, we're like turtles, and we go into our shell. And I'm thinking about the incredible season that C.D. Lamb had, but here's the thing that I don't understand about C.D. C.D., when he's on and in his game, unstoppable. He has a chance to be offensive player of the year this year. He was number two in receptions. But in my mind, I feel like CeeDee Lamb needs somebody else to be the Robin. You know, two years ago going to training camp, we we all had questions on whether or not CeeDee Lamb was a number one wide receiver. His production is, is incredible. But see, I think the thing that's missing most on the Cowboys is that fiery personnel personnel person excuse me that fiery person that when shit hits the fan can be hardcore enough to say no we ain't accepting this shit because when you think about early part of the season i think about before the offense started getting together the defense was taking care of business and stuff you know the offense was struggling and for several games there cd lamb wasn't getting the ball and not getting over, I think, 53 yards. I think it was three games straight. And I couldn't see Des Bryant. I couldn't see Michael Irvin okay with that and literally just kind of like, oh, well, it'll be my turn when it is. Or a T.O. You have guys like Michael Irvin 
better known as the playmaker, that literally when they come out there, they get in your face. You push them, they're going to push back. They're not going to take shit. And I don't think CeeDee Lamb is that guy. And that's not to say there's anything wrong with CeeDee Lamb. There's not. Everybody has a different personality. But what I'm saying is on both sides of the ball, when we look at this, Micah Parsons is is electric. Micah Parsons, I think, actually is a little too much of a sportsman. When the game's over, he's over there exchanging jerseys, you know, in in losses. He's, you know, where we literally destroyed the New York Giants. You know, he's questioning, you know, why why the Giants are still having um, Daniel Jones out on the field getting beat down. He's too nice. What I need is I need somebody out there who doesn't give a rat's ass about the other guys and their feelings. Somebody who basically destroys another guy. Debo Samuels is that kind of a receiver. Debo Samuels is physical. He's in your face. He runs with aggression. And other players feed off of that. And that's what I think is missing on that offensive side of the ball. We had the playmaker. The playmaker, listen... (laughs) He going to be in your face. He going to lead by example. He's not going to take shit. And then on the defense, and that also went through the offensive line too. When you think about how Kevin Gogan, Gogues, or Eric Williams, those guys put fear <clears throat> in the competition. It wasn't, <laughs> hey, we're for, No. You thought that they're going to chase your ass in the parking lot and kick your ass some more out there. And on defense, that was truly Charles Haley. That was truly Charles Haley. Charles Haley was, he put fear in people. They would be like, that mother humper is crazy. That guy is crazy. And you felt like he was crazy. I know. I know, because <laughs> back in the day, he was. That's the thing that's missing, because, see, when you get guys that are like that, they don't give a rat's ass about what, what you know, the score. They ain't giving up. They crazy. They're out there fighting even harder when shit's going bad. And if we don't find people that get a little bit mad, a little bit disturbed about getting their ass kicked, we going to be in the same spot again next year. Do we have a little bit lesser talent when it comes to the elite games? Yes, we do. But even still, you can't look at us being the number two seed going against the Green Bay Packers and literally folding, just folding, I can understand San Francisco that's, you know, great all the way across the field. But to have the Green Bay Packers come in there and play smash mouth, the Cowboys get punched in the face and literally just back down. I I, I can't take that. I, I don't understand that. And this is where I hope that maybe Mike Zimmer, if he is hired as the coach, can put some of that fire and passion out there because a lot of times what players do is they emulate their head coach and you want them to emulate somebody who's got a little bit of passion a little bit of you know thug in them a little bit of edge and i hope and pray that this offseason that that's part of the equation of what we look for are you good people i appreciate you guys and um hopefully We'll get this shit right this year. Peace.